the elaborate gown clinging to her sharp shoulders begins to rot as her torso parts open like a blooming rose, revealing decaying bone and organs that run down her skirt like horrific decor. I don't know what just happened, but... Okay, guys, we're gonna be playing a little game called Decentra. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but let's go. Okay, let's go. This game contains content with blood, death, violence, unhealthy relationships between characters, and horrific imagery that players may find uncomfortable or disturbing. Player discretion is advised. Please play responsibly and take care of yourself. Contact warning. Lovely. Right before bed. The best time. Alright. I drag myself through the rain. It blurs my vision, forcing me to feel my way through the forest, wind crushing against me from all sides. This artwork, though, let's take a second. Pretty good. Prayer is my only form of navigation, but I think the blood running through my veins prevents me from landing in God's graces. I fumble over the tangle of roots and slip over wet moss. My bones instantly shudder from the cold shock running through my nails as I grab onto the, a nearby rock. A pathetic whine escapes my throat. I don't know if that music is a little too loud. Turn it down a little. My grandmother would have a ball if she could see me right now. I can hear her snide remark already. See what happens when you don't listen to me? As if I wouldn't survive long enough to hear the real deal. I sniffle in frustration and try to shake the feeling away with the rain dripping down my face. She's always right, of course. I just... For a moment, my defiance had given me everything I wanted. Lost in thought, I lose control of my limbs. I'm not used to using them all at once, and it's enough to throw me back into the slick earth. Now I really want to cry. The storm is harsh. A thick canopy of trees above me does little to shield me from its rage. They passively turn their leaves away, instead tempting me to scream my grandmother's harshest curses at them. Am I losing it? I shakily lift myself from the ground, snorting weakly into a puddle. For the middle of summer, it sure is pouring hard. The rain feels like shards of ice against my skin. I watch it distort the reflection in the puddle with ripples. In the brief moments where the reflection almost settles, I see piercing yellow eyes, dark fur, and wilted ears, sleek and clinging to the small, vulnerable, vulnerable form of a wolf pup. The voice of my grandmother hisses in my mind. What have you done, Basil? I like this. Well, like, really, the imagery... I need to get back home. I tear away from the puddle and trek on. <clears throat> Please, something lead me back home. Something. Anything. Maybe that's a risky thing to ask of this forest, though. Because something answers. It's so faint that I question if it's even real. A howl cuts cuts through the wind, or perhaps it's the wind that shrinks away from the sound that it ambles through. <clears throat> Fighting my way through the storm has exhausted my body. The frontal lobe of my brain begins to neglect its responsibility to remember what reason is. All my instincts scream to ignore it, but my heart, a stupidly curious thing, makes me take a step forward. My fuzzy ears pick up the heavy sounds of my heart pounding. I try to convince myself it's because of the fear. I need to focus on where the howling's coming from. As I get closer to the sound, it begins to resemble crying. The storm has also started to retract its claws. Was it the force showing mercy, or has it submitted to something more formidable? I've lived in the woods my whole life. 
I should know better than anyone to never get too comfortable. A red light perforates through the dark at I mean the dark atmosphere. I swallow harshly. There's a mansion in the middle of the woods. From a distance it would look abandoned if not for the hazy red light coming from the rooftop. I squint. I take a sip. Is that a greenhouse? A shadowy figure moves quickly behind its clear walls. Startling me, I duck into the tall I duck into the tall and neglected grass that grows in the mansion's yard. After a short short while, I peek through the blades. The shadow is gone. Did I imagine it? I release a nervous sigh and observe the grounds for any sign of life or death. It was a bad idea to come here. A terrible one even. I can't stay here. I retreat back into the shadows of the forest, keeping the mansion in my light of sight. The moment I feel bold enough to turn my back against it, a powerful gale slams into me. I tumble back hard, skidding across the ground and into the tall grass with a cry. It takes me a moment to recover from my swirling vision. I let out a whimper as pain blooms from my arm. It's too dark to see clearly, but it swells up when I try to move. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. I grip my teeth and get back on my feet, keeping my weight off my arm as I make for the forest again. <laughs> Again, I'm denied entrance by the mysterious force. Panic starts to seep through my bones. I almost wish I could go back to feeling hopeless. I stare at the trees as though they suddenly start playing nice. But beings as ancient as them do not bend to anyone's will but their own. The wind gives one more shove. It insists I move forward. I bear my adolescent fangs at it to smother the hurt. I know now that my choices were nothing but illusions. I face the mansion once again. It's clear that something or someone from the inside is inviting me in. With no other choice, I creep along the worn brick walls of the mansion and try to find a way in. Ooh, we got choices. I go to the window, I go to the side of the door, I go somewhere else. Let's go to the window. I spy a broken window and see a gauzy white curtain thrashing against the glass from the intruding storm. Sadly, it's too far high for me to climb, and there's no way I can jump in this state. Ugh, that's gonna be our last choice, isn't it? I go somewhere else. A faint knocking grabs my attention. I pad to the back of the mansion and my saving grace comes in a form of a door slightly left ajar. Ah. Ha. I mean. I nudge my nose into the tight gap, and relief washes over me when it parts. Then... Okay, that was a lot of creak. <laughs> a little... As an ear, where am I reading eyes? An ear-piercing screech echoes through the man mansion as it hinges, as the hinges begin to shift. From the looks of it, they haven't moved for a long time. <clears throat> the feeling of ice floods my veins. <clears throat> I stay frozen in the doorway. If this mansion is inhabited, there's no way I didn't just announce my entrance. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Fear takes over again. My back paw intu intuitively steps back, so I attempt to run as far away from this place as I can. The sound of thunder explodes behind me. I feel my body take on a life of its own as I throw myself into the mansion against my will. The door slams on my way in. I breathe shallowly. When I come to my senses, I'm in the kitchen. I'm in a kitchen. My bad. It's dark inside the house. The only source of light comes from the windows above the counters. Everything beyond its reach is void. 
I see a kitchen table and crawl towards it, scratching my nails along the musty wood flooring in a rush to get beneath it. I stay under the table as my breathing starts returning to a normal pace. My eyes are wide and my ears are perked up on the lookout for anything that could be a threat. The only sound I pick up are heavy drums of the rain from outside and the occasional creak of the mansion walls breathing in the night air. <clears throat> when I'm confident that there's no sign of life in this manner, I crawl back into the open, immediately shake off as much rain as and mud as I can. <clears throat> When I am confident that there is no sign of life inside this manor, I crawl back into the open and immediately- Oh, why am I reading that again? Sorry guys. <clears throat> I let myself celebrate the minor luxury of finally escaping the moths of the weather, but I don't let my nerves calm down just yet. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't record for a while and you have to read. My voice is already messed up. If y'all don't notice, I don't talk a lot. My throat feels very, uh, raspy. It's probably going to be sore tomorrow. Let's get back to it. As soon as my, as soon, as soon as my eyes adjust better to the dark, I take my time to study my surroundings more. I notice a hearth that lacks any recent maintenance. Dishes crowd the counter. A thick layer of dust forces me to smother a sneeze. This place hasn't been occupied in a long time. <clears throat> Surely I can allow myself to breathe just a little bit easier in this space. At least until the storm wanes. I bring in a deep inhale, being careful not to get any dust and tread cautiously. As I stalk further in, I hold my breath at every corner, carefully looking in all directions for danger. The rest of the mansion is as devoid as life uh oh shit is as devoid of life as the kitchen most of the rooms here have closed doors the ones i could see in were graciously empty sans the derelict furnishings within barely anything is in de decent shape i couldn't guess how long it's been since a human lived in this manor but based on the scratched hardwood floors and the broken but intricate looking side table nested in a dark corner. I have the impression that this place was neglected even when, while it was occupied. My nails tap on the floor as I limp into the hallway, my mind settling from all the adrenaline, the ache in my front legs start to swell, and the heat of my body intensifies with the pain. Paintings line the walls from end to end but it's, so, it's hard to see them in the dark. Through glimpses of light, I can make out some faded landscapes, a few mountains, some castles, and a couple of portraits. One portrait in particular catches my eye. I stop in front of it. I stare at the portrait. Why did it get so quiet? Kinda scared me, okay. I stare at the portrait, foolishly thinking that it's staring right back. Surely it's just a slight fever settling in and making me come up with silly things. I don't think I've lost my mind just yet, though. As I observe the side profile of a pale woman, I notice that she's eerily the most realistic painting I've seen so far. When she turns her head to look down on my tiny form, every hair on my body goes stiff. Her lovely features captured in oil begin to melt off as she steps out of, from the painting. Smooth ivory skin shrivels to a deathly pallor. The elaborate gown clinging to her sharp shoulders begins to rot as her torso parts open like a blooming rose, revealing decaying bone and organs that run down her skirt like horrific decor okay I immediately start running away as fast as I physically can mango don't start crying you're scaring me 
As I scramble to get away on my hurt leg, I hear something that might be worse than a ghost. The woody and spicy scent of incense fills the humid air, creating a hazy purple fog. The sound of change, m chains moving in a controlled rhythm rattles me to the marrow in my bones. Footsteps follow shortly after, growing louder alongside the clinking chains. It's coming from the staircase. My breath quickens. I slide to a halt and backtrack away from the sounds. I look behind me and see the glowing apparition <coughs> of the woman hunched from form stumbling towards me dragging a trail of gore with a wet squelch squelch hide i need to hide where my eyes start across every inch of the hallway desperately searching for a small sanctuary Dang. the footsteps are right behind me the ghost is right in front of me the, this hallway now feels like a tomb all of the doors are firmly shut. I press against the wall, my heart skipping a beat when I notice a faint tapping sound coming from behind me. I turn around and witness the outline of a door revealing itself. I waste no time shoving my muzzle between the crack to wrench it open. What are y'all doing, little babies? As soon as I pry the door open, I hurl myself through back into the darkness. I walk backwards away from the door, keeping my eyes on it. I'm so focused on the door that I bump into something cold and I almost trip over it. I look up and see a dark iron staircase curling up to a high ceiling. A hatch near the top is open, letting the rain from the outside drip down onto the cold metal. I hear footsteps once again, this time much louder. I don't dare to breathe or move. Okay. There you are. The voice startles me into moving. No way I was about to stick around and find out what fate awaits me. Every fiber of my being is ringing with danger as I climb the stairs with only adrenaline instruction instructing my limbs. I drag myself up the iron steps until I'm bursting onto the roof and back into the store. I'm not thinking anymore. I see the greenhouse I'd spotted earlier and sprint towards it as fast as I can. I search for a small space to crawl into, tripping over a mess of vines along the way. Thunder and lightning roar above me. A bright flash of white blinds me. I can feel my claws scratch against the wet tiles. A door slams shut in the distance, causing a rippling effect in the walls and reaching the rooftop. When the rippling stops, everything goes quiet. The energy of the manor shifts completely. A jolt of lightning from the storm makes my fur stand. It charges the air and saturates it with a smell of ozone. I shake the rain from my face. <clears throat> the whole world has fallen silent, except for the sound of a chilling drip. Basil. I freeze. My eyes carefully follow the coil of dead roots on the gray floor of the greenhouse. Drip. I follow this trail away to the blood dripping onto the dirty tiles and the pale feet beside it. My eyes climb the mysterious figure. I don't think I'll ever forget the sight before me for as short as I live. Lightning flashes brightly through the tall windows. Blooming rose bushes creep along them. White roses speckled across its dark leaves like stars in the night sky. The bright flowers begin to bleed red before my very eyes. At the rose bushes' crimson-soaked center, a small girl stands with her back towards me. <laughs> Blood drips from my tiny bite marks all over her hand. A red flower bulb is crushed between her delicate fingers.
Instead of a strong floral scent, the smell of burning paper and wilting lilacs flood my senses. A whine unwinnowing crawls up my throat and cuts through the silence. Time resumes once again. The girl turns, her gaze piercing right through me. The bulb drops from her hand. She doesn't say a word. Her attention is mine against my own will. Black, dogs, black dots begin to appear in the corners of my vision. The last thing I saw was her walking towards me before everything faded to dark. My fever is brutal throughout the night. I slip in and out of consciousness to flames beneath my skin and an ache I rather sleep off than face. I try to let my body go back to sleep, but strong hands force my jaws open and shove something down my throat. The intrusion makes me violently resist, but I'm far too weak to fend the intruder away. The dark takes me into its takes me into its arms once again. I wake to the tang of rusty metal and humid humid air. The unfamiliar sensation makes my eyes snap open. Beyond the small cage that holds me, it's dark and damp. I clench my jaw as I examine my surroundings. Soon my eyes fixate on the ghost staring at me from outside my metal prison. I yelp and throw my body backwards, hitting the back of the cage. I expect the bite of hard metal on my back, but something smooth bends around my shape instead. It hisses at me in response. I don't think I like that very much. My claws scrape the cold floor of the cage as I spin. The bars behind me morph into slithering vipers in defense stances each one barring their, bearing their fangs in anger. Careful. Their venom will make the blood in your body solidify in seconds. That wouldn't be a very pleasant way to die. I look at the ghost in horror. They're breathing so quickly that I'm convinced I'll die from lack of oxygen. Or so I think. The vipers settle back into the metal bars and I make myself small. I don't want to risk testing their patience again. The ghost is not a ghost, but a girl. Her hair looks like ink that's violent, been violently knocked over and spilled onto the floor. It melts into the dark surroundings, contrasting her gray and sickly looking skin. Her expression is blank. I see her hands tightly clutching her white gown. Do you bite? Do you? I want to ask. I reveal my teeth through a snarl and watch as she shows hers with a small smile. The fur along my spine stands up. She starts to move and I flinch. The girl crawls towards the cage and I curl my nails. She reaches for me, a pale hand passing between the bars without resistance that freezes right in front of my snout. She's checking to see if I would really bite. Has she no fear, offering her hand so fearlessly in the presence of a beast? I may only be a pup, but the sneer force on my jaws can pierce right through her palm. Oh, I repel. I pull my face away from her hand and see her startle from my peripheral vision. She pulls her hand back and holds it against her collar. My eyes lock with hers as she, as she stares at me with her lips pressed together. It'll be hard for me to protect you if you're a too scaredy cat to do as I say. My eyes snap back to the girl. I watch as she stands up and wipes her hands on her dress, not showing a single care about how dirty it's become. If you want to survive, you'll have to listen to my instructions. Okay, doggy? She tilts her head like she expects me to respond. Don't try to be too brave. If you're smart, you'll stay careful. The others had too much fight in them and made them foolish. My heart pounds in my chest from her words alone. She gives another haunting smile. When your arm is better, 
take you for a walk before he gets back. Is this what she sounds like when she's excited? It's unsettling. She suddenly moves close to the cage again. I jump and back away. Just enough where I don't risk getting in trouble with the vipers again. The scent of burning parchment and wilting lilacs returns. The girl's hair falls off her shoulders. I expected ink to trickle down and dye her dress black. My name is Dove. Horrible to meet you, Dove. <laughs> What is that? Chapter 1 Roses? I spend the night nursing the, the drags of my fever. Need a little sippy sip. How long have I been reading? 27 minutes. That can't be. When I'd first woken up, I didn't take notice of how much I'd already been soothed, but now vague memories of violating hands surface in my thoughts. Did the girl, Duff, give me some kind of medicine during the, the height of my fever? My body still feels uncomfortably warm. I rest my head on one arm and glance at the other one that had been hurt earlier. I clean, uh, a clean bandage is firmly wrapped around, not enough to cut off the blood flow but enough to restrict the movement. Was this also Dove's handiwork? I sigh softly through my nose, then close my eyes. Time passes ambiguously in the cage, with nothing to reference. I don't know if it's been mere hours or days. A bowl of water sits in the corner of my cage. I know from the dryness of my throat that I need to hydrate, but I haven't yet mustered up the courage to approach the bars that slither and rattle ever so often. When I'm desperate enough to finally quench my thirst, the bars relievingly keep their metal forms. Feeling better now, I curl into a ball and my tail cradles into my face. I want to go home. Exhaustion catches up to me once again. I fell asleep on the crusty metal and wake on the dusty floor wood. The sound of wind chimes alert me into consciousness. My eyes snap open and my retinas are immediately burned by the color that floods into them. I don't know how long this game's supposed to be. I thought it was like short 15 minutes. guys I'm gonna go ahead and save that because my throat is jacked I don't know how much longer we got on this but I'm really enjoying it it's like really cool I like the the what's it called my brain's not working I like the art the the words give so much like images like it's just the words are nice even though it's I'm struggling to pronounce them and say the words correctly that are right in front of my face, um, <laughs> as you know. Anyway, I'm really enjoying this. Um, let me know what y'all think, and we'll see what happens in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, go check out my other videos, and see y'all later. Hope y'all having a great day, and if you're not, Hope it gets better. Peace, my little chummy cats. If you haven't seen my t-shirt, I'm obsessed with Doja Cat. Okay, anyway. <laughs>